Nigeria faces a debt crisis with a debt burden of more than 33 trillion naira and 97% of revenue spent on servicing the debt. How can we solve this challenge? The Southern Governor's ban on open grazing divides Nigeria, a number of groups in support and a particular Fulani cultural group totally opposed to it. We'll be talking to a leader of the group who says the South should forget about the presidency in 2023. And tributes pour in from entertainers and everyday Nigerians for talented artist and singer Sound Sultan, who died at the age of 44. Good morning and thank you for joining us here on PLOS TV Africa, another very beautiful Monday morning edition of The Breakfast. We hope you had a great weekend and uh, once again, thanks for joining us. Good morning, Aneta. Yes, good morning and good morning to you. Good to see you this morning. Same here. How was your weekend? <laughs> it was short, as always. Yeah. I was here, I left here, uh, what, almost 11 p.m. on uh, Saturday and of course I just had Sunday to rest, but back at it again on Monday morning. But, you know, let's see how the week goes. We hope it's going to be really, really interesting. Yes, and um, the, the sad thing is, I don't know, it seems we have two bad stories for our top training, even even though some people would say it's good news I for the rest of the world okay. and, you know, bad for just England, but we know that it didn't come home, did it? No, it did not. <laughs> you know, just like I had predicted on Thursday, uh, you know, you same with uh, Wally Scott. Yeah, I said it wasn't going to come home, you know, so everyone who was... Ex I'm not even sure why Nigerians were saying it's coming home. Coming home where? <laughs> Nigeria wasn't playing, you know, in the Euro. So what do you mean by coming home? Um, and so, yes, I, I didn't want England to win, you know, for personal reasons. Um, and yesterday, you know, after they lost, so I feel bad for, you know, uh, um, um, Saka and um, Rashford and Sancho and every other, you know, player. And of course, including Manchester United players. But um, I feel bad for them. But, you know, seeing the reaction that the England fans had after they lost, you know, it really just makes me, you know, say loud and clear that, yes, it's a good day. They didn't come home. Immediately they lost. The racism kicked in. <laughs> Immediately they lost, you know, the racial abuse kicked in. You know, if you look at... Um, Sakai's Instagram page, you know, it's all filled with monkey um, emojis and, and, and the likes. Um, there's also video clips of people being assaulted as they got out of the stadium, you know, mostly, you know, Italian fans and some black people being assaulted after they, as they, you know, made their way out of the stadium. So, um, yes, you know, good for them. It didn't come home. You know, I'm proud of the Italians. Mm. Um, and like myself and Wally Scott had predicted, it was definitely going to be an, you know, an Italy win. It really showed, you know, um, um, a lot of, um, you know, the, the lapses with regards, I feel, you know, it showed the lapses with uh, Gareth Southgate, you know, compared to the Italian coach uh, Mancini, I think is his name. So congratulations to Italy. Um, and no, it didn't come home. I have so many questions regarding this uh, game where England lost to Italy, because first of all, I want to know your personal reasons. You mentioned that you had personal reasons why you didn't want England to win. And it seemed like it, it, that was how it was for majority of you know, football lovers around the world. They didn't want England to win. Could you shed more light on exactly why? Well, I already, I already said it, you know, because I, 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 I knew um, the attitude of the England fans, you know, and if they had won, yeah, we, would, we wouldn't hear, we'll hear the last of it. We'll probably hear of this bragging for the next 10 years. <laughs> Um, and they will never let it go, you know, so there is that. And then also because of what happened immediately after they lost, you know, how the racism immediately kicked in, you know, so that's not, that's not, you know, a team that I would, you know, support. I want, you know, some success for the English national team because it's been too long since they, you know, picked up any trophy anywhere, not even in Tejo Show Markets. They haven't gotten any trophy <laughs> anywhere, um, but... Um, you know, because of these little, you know, factors here and there, I like the, the fact that their team has grown and it's a totally different and very, very fra uh, fresh uh, team that we're seeing. More tactical, you know, a lot faster. The, the football is more beautiful than it used to be, in, you know, in other eras. But at the same time, you know, I really just supported Italy. I don't know any of the Italian players, you know, personally. I don't care about any of them. Um, but I, I personally just didn't want Italy um, or England uh, to win it. Hmm. Uh, they, sh they should try again next. Maybe next Euros they might, you know, be, you know, be successful. At, wow, at wow. Good luck to them. Wow. So, right now, Italy is the champion of England. Everybody's happy about champion that. Champion of Europe. Sh champion of Europe, I yeah. beg your pardon. I saw a map that was put out. It says, you know, the map was predominantly colored blue. And it said, this is the amount of people who wanted England to just lose. And I think it's just... 
you know, sad to see how English fans reacted after the game. And then I saw his statistics about um, how, how much, you know, domestic abuse there were in the US, in the UK, when, you know, English fans or English clubs lose. And I'm like, is this really true? Yeah. And this is a fact that when an Eng England team loses, you know, the, peop the supporters begin to they abuse. get very violent. I mean, so, so, so over time, they, they've you know been on record as one, having one of the most violent and racist um, uh, supporters um, for football. And not just their national team, including their cl uh, you know club uh, football teams. There's always been that. It doesn't necessarily paint the whole picture of what English football is like. Um, there is also the you know dissent and you know football loving and very very pure hearted football fans in England. There's, I mean, there are probably even more. But those very, very dark stains here and there have not been successfully taken away. And I don't understand how you can support mm. Bukayo Saka and support, you know, Rashford and Sterling and those black players on days when they win. The days when they, they, you know, get England through any game, you support them and you praise them. But immediately they make any mistake whatsoever. They immediately turn to monkeys. Terrible, terrible. It's I mean, very, th very bad. there's a statement here from the FA spokesperson. It says, FA statement on discriminatory abuse. The FA strongly condemns all forms of discrimination and is appalled by the online racism that has been aimed at some of our England players on social media. We could not be clearer that anyone behind such disgusting behavior is not welcome on our team. We will do all we can to support the players affected, all urging the toughest punishments for anyone responsible. So really, uh, what impact would this make? Can they actually do anything substantial? I don't because think this, they can. Is, this is an abuse. This is a systemic you know, yeah, abuse I, that has been going on for a long time. So what really can they do to stop this? This, you know, this really is not about, you know, a couple of fans. This is not about 12 fans, you know, that might get lifetime bans from, you know, stadiums. This is not about, you know, being able to, you know, fine, you know, 100 of them, you know, for racist, you know, remarks or for you know, <coughs> uh, violent, you know, uh, attacks after the, after the games. It's go it goes beyond that. It really just tells you the kind of society that, you know, England you know, has. Um, and no matter how many fans you ban, if you don't find ways to actually kick out racism, taking a knee um, after the um, uh, Black Lives Matter protest, you know, which went around the world, you know, mm -hmm. you still see people criticizing it. But they did that, you know, to show some level of sol solidarity with, um, um, with Africans and with their black players. But it, it really hasn't changed much. Um, and so there has to be ways that England systematically needs to find a way to kick out racism, the world. Not just England. Now, the whole world needs to, you know, continue to ensure that racism is completely kicked out. I don't know how successful it will be in our lifetime, but it will take, you know, more than just a few fines here and there and, you mm. know, and, and a few statements from the English FA. There has to be a whole lot more. None of those people that you're talking about is on the team. So I'm not sure what they mean by, you know, you can't join the team. None of them is on the team. None of them will, you know, ever be on, on that team. They're really just supporters who, of course, express themselves in a very, very disgusting way after they lose. Um, so I can imagine what it would have been like if they actually did win. We would not hear the last of this oh because my. Morgan would have been all <laughs> over the internet for the next couple of days talking about it. But um, congratulations to Italy. Um, they played a very, very good game. They um, um, got back after you know being one goal down two minutes into the game. Uh, I think in the 67th minute they eventually scored a goal, uh, played it all the way to you know extra time, and then you know won on penalties. England lost three penalties mm. um, um, from Sancho from. Uh, uh, what's his name now? Rashford and from Bukayo Saka, sadly. Um, but of course. Big one there. So congratulations again to Italy, the champions of Europe. But next stop is something that really shook most of Nigeria. And it's about the death of one of our very finest musicians, Sound Sultan. There's been tributes pouring in, for, you know, mm. from everywhere, you know, just sending condolences and well wishes to the family regarding the passing of our very own musician. Um, he had passed from a certain type of cancer. When the news broke earlier that he had um, throat cancer, he didn't deny that, he didn't confirm it, he just was silent about it. We saw a video that he posted on Father's Day with his children singing, playing the guitar. They were all having fun. And then we heard the news and that he's now been buried in the U.S. It's just so sad. He, I mean, he was so young. He was just 44, full of life. You know, it's, it's just a lot. You need to see the tributes that's been pouring in. I even saw a statement from um, one of the, you know, representatives of the U.S. consul, you know, sending um, condolences to Sound Sultan and his family, 
all the big musicians you can think of in Nigeria, Two Face, Adibia, all the big names, Richard Mufeda, Damijo, Debo Macaroni, Femi Kuti, you know, so it's just, it's something that just saddens a lot of people. We can really all sad. agree on something that he did make his mark. I mean, you, we talk about how you compare music of before and music of now, and you see so much difference. It seems the music of now gets you happy, gets you moving, makes you dance. But when we talk about substance, it's, it's a debate we keep having. The substance in the content of the music of the 1990s, you know, his first music was in 1999, that was Jabba Jansis. You, you saw people trying to make a statement, people trying to make a difference, people trying to pass a message. He was very, he used his music for political activism and we saw it. We saw it in the music videos he did. We saw it in the content of his lyrics. We saw it in the, in the, in the person that he, he, in his persona, who he represented as an artist. And we're grateful to have had Sound Sultan and it's a shame that he's passed so soon. So Pity, um, Sound Sultan's death is, um, you know, a perfect, you know, time to once again remind us uh, about, um, you know, the, the fact that you, yes, it was a very sad day for me. I, and, you know, I admit that I, uh, for a long time, I haven't had any reasons to actually cry because anybody uh, passed. But yesterday I did cry, mostly because, you know, it's a reminder that um, you, we come to this earth with nothing, we live with nothing. Um, what's, you know, most important is the mark that we live in the time that we're here and what people have to say about you in the time that you're here, the life that you live, you know, how people eulogize you after you pass. And he is a perfect example of a person who nobody had anything bad to say about. Sound Sultan was everything to the Nigerian music industry. In every single direction you can imagine. He was a comedian, he was an artist, he was a producer, he was an actor. Exactly. He was everything that you can imagine. He was, he was completely grounded. I thought yesterday of how people would take it, how would Two-Face take it? Because they were, they were extremely close friends. Basket Mouth, T.Y. Mix, um, Banky W, um, a lot of these people who have been friends with him for a very, very long time. I couldn't imagine the pain that they were dealing with. And, and um, I would always like to say, okay, let's focus on celebrating the life that he lived, but you cannot take away the actual pain that this brings to the industry. And this is for everybody in the whole industry, not just in music. In the movie in, in industry, these are people who have been, for everyone who has been there for the last 20 years and more, um, he had a massive, massive impact on the industry. Um, he supported every single person. There was never any time. L just look around social media yesterday. There was nobody whatsoever that didn't feel the need to make a post Within or Nigeria, say something. Abroad, outside. Even Wycliffe, uh, Wycliffe, 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 Wycliffe put yes. up something, called him his cousin. Um, and that is the impact that he had silently in, um, on the industry. It was a sad day. And I said it yesterday, um, what's, this, what's it called now? That Ishoke said, oh, you know, a tree has fallen. You know, that was his way of expressing, um, you know, what had happened. But it was a, it is one of the saddest moments in, I don't think I felt this bad about the death of a Nigerian artist since Da Green. But this was one of the saddest moments in the Nigerian music, mu music industry. And nothing, nothing would ever replace um, the impact that Sound Sultan had, not just in the music, but with the personal relationships and the support that he gave to other artists, the level of support that he was able to render to many, 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 many people. And everybody who met him said the same thing. Exactly. And one thing about Sound Sultan, just like Two-Face, he's a humble man. I remember when I met him in 2016 when I was in radio in Berlin City, he, he just... You can just see that persona around him, very, very free, very open. He was very humble, played with everyone. You know, you will hear stories about people say, oh, this celebrity snubbed me. I tried to take a picture with her, she snubbed me. Sound Sultan wasn't like that. He was a complete opposite. And no one had ever had anything negative to say about him. And it's, a, it's just a very It's a really sad great day. soul. You know, I think that that's, that's how I would describe him. Well, he, was a, he was a completely great, beautiful soul, you know, that lived in that person called Sound, uh, Sound Sultan. Lonry, as, uh, as uh, people who know him personally will call him. Um, and so it does hurt. It's a sad way to start up a Monday morning. But um, we, of course, had to quickly share about this. So we wish his family well. Uh, we hope that, of course, uh, people can, um, people can, you know, also get to, sh you know, look at some of the, the way he lived his life and take examples from, um, you know, the life that he lived, um, which was a very, very beautiful life. And mm. you know, don't cry, he's gone. Um, and remember, you know, that as we come, we also will go, you know, so make sure that you give the best to the, you know, the time that you're here and the journey that yes. you're on. Really sad.
Anyway, quickly, we also would celebrate with the Tigers, uh, Nigeria's basketball team who defeated um, uh, the USA's dream team over the weekend also. Um, it was a shock uh, victory. I think it was 1987. <laughs> yeah, that one came home. Yeah, that's that's the one that we should have been talking about. You know, it's coming home, it's coming home. But I think it was a friendly game. Um, and we won that one 90 to 87. Really, really shocking. I'm sure they didn't even expect that they would win. Um, not very many people follow Nigerian basketball. It's not as popular as a... Uh, as the Super Eagles uh, mm. and the football team. But for those who got, got to see this, it was definitely something to celebrate over the weekend. And it really also shows, um, yeah, I would quickly throw this in. Uh, it really also shows you the difference with managing a team mm -hmm. outside Nigeria and managing a team here, you know, being in control of uh, the likes mm. of Sunday Dari and, uh, and uh, <laughs> other people here who, of course, are struggling. Athletics is struggling. No shade. Football is struggling. Oh, all the shade in the no world. No shade. <laughs> Everything concerning the Nigerian sports industry is struggling to okay. breathe. But, but this was an international shocker. I mean, uh, yes. Who, who saw this coming? The literal dark horse. Well, you know, I'm sure. I'm, I'm pretty also sure that they believe in themselves well enough to able to pull that off because they played that game, mm. you know, in its entirety until eventually the you know final bell rang. Um, Wally Scott will definitely talk about it. So congratulations to them. But well, once again, shame on those who manage the sports in the country here. The, you know, our local sports. That we, we cannot in any way. I don't, I don't know what we're going to do, do in the Olympics. I've said it before. I don't know what we're going to do in the Olympics, including those ones that have had their jerseys in, at the port. I, I read the story about their jerseys and the equipment being at the port, and they were asked to pay money. You know, and they, were, they kept saying, no, no, this is for the Olympics team. And the... the Port authority says it's not their business. You know, you should come and pay and collect their, you know, this. Eventually, I think it arrived later. Probably hasn't even arrived till now. Those are the kind of lapses that we have in the country here yeah, that would we make it extremely difficult for anybody, any person, no matter how talented you or skilled you are, to be successful it just in the Nigerian your sports drive, industry. Doesn't it? No. Anyway, so yeah, congratulations to the Nigerian <laughs> yes. USA-based um, basketball team, the Tigers, and we hope that we, you know, you continue to make us proud. All right. Let's take a break here and we'll join Mr. Tunde Kolawole in just a few seconds for Off the Press.